hey you guys hey you guys so look I just told my husband and JB the story so I figured I would come on cam and tell y'all the story before um, I forget <clears throat> so this is the story hold on girl Ooh, child <laughs> this was the story I started telling on the finale of the story with Quentin and Mina and I had originally named the story the girl who led but now we have switched up the title to call to be called the hive so all right y'all and y'all thank y'all for your comments and all this a couple y'all like write it down already write your story I have so many ideas like I literally have thousands of ideas right. let's get into the story time so the story time is called the hive our main character is Chrissy and it is set in Tyler Texas which is um in East Texas those of you who are not familiar mm -hmm. about two hours um, from Dallas okay so Chrissy has a doctor's appointment and before she arrives at her doctor's appointment she received a voicemail that said just to let you know our offices have moved to the old part of the hospital the old psych ward because our offices are undergoing construction Chris is like the psych ward okay so as she arrives to the hospital sure enough she sees there's construction going on and I told y'all before it's five flights it's actually four flights excuse me four stories okay so as she arrives she parks her car and sure enough she tries every entryway into this hospital and she can't get in so she calls up her doctors and say hey I can't figure out how to get into the hospital so she she sees the signs that says you know west way so she starts to walk towards that entry um and as she walking she looks up towards the sky it's a beautiful day she looks up and on the third floor she notices the blinds and one window kind of going swaying back and forth she sees a young girl in a pretty floral dress and so Chrissy sees that the young girl um kind of has a sad look on her face and so she waves and smiles at her but the little girl doesn't wave or smile back and so Chrissy thought it was kind of odd but she goes to her doctor's appointment everything is well everything checks out well as she's leaving and she gets her appointment card from the receptionist she tells the lady um who gives her the card she's like you know what i thought y'all said that all the floors were shut down i saw a little girl on the on the third floor and the receptionist kind of looked at her oddly and said that's not possible the elevators are not working on floors two and up and everything has been blocked off so christy kind of looked there and she's like that's odd i know i wasn't hallucinating but okay she walks out as she walking out she gets a phone call from her boyfriend Jeff. she answers the call she's like hey she's like hey Chrissy um so how was your appointment she's like Jeff I know you're not asking about that you just want to make sure I want to show up tonight mm-hmm he's like yeah you got me I just want to make sure you're still coming over so she's like yeah I'm still coming over I'll call you when I'm on my way he's like all right bet he hangs up so Chrissy decides to she's like you know what this will bug me if I don't go check out on this little girl to make sure she's okay because she looked really sad. So she decides to turn away from the elevator head towards the stairway. She walks up. Her appointment is on the first floor. She should, so she just goes up. And as she's entering the um uh the doorway she opens up the doorway and it's kind of dark because the electricity has all been turned out. It takes a while for her eyes to adjust to the dimness. And so Christy lets out a hello. And all she hears is her echo, her voice echoing back to her. So she decides to walk a little bit towards the hallway, walking slowly, carefully. She doesn't want to, you know, trip over anything. The office furniture that is there is covered with plastic. So she says to herself, this is crazy. She proceeds to turn around and go back towards the stairway girl. That's when she hears soft crying. And so she turns around and she repeats again, hello. And she hears the crying a little bit louder. So Chrissy starts to walk towards the crying, right? And she gets closer and closer and the crying gets louder. She makes a right hand turn towards a small hallway and she sees the little girl sitting down Indian style with her head in her hand sobbing. And she's like, sweetheart, are you okay? The little girl lifts up her head and she shakes her head no. So Christy walks slowly towards her and she's like, are you lost? Did you lose your mommy and daddy? And the little girl shook her head no. She's like, you know what? Why don't I take you downstairs to my doctor and we'll call the office security, excuse me, the building security so that someone can find your parents. So they proceed to walk back towards where she came from. As they go towards the stairway that Chrissy thought they had came from, she noticed a brick wall. And she's like, that's odd. I'm pretty sure there was a stairway here. 
She's like, okay, sweetheart, let's just go back this way. So as they head towards look for another way out this floor, Christian starts to make small talk with the little girl. She's like, okay, so what's your name? She says, CJ. She's like, oh, CJ. So does it stand for anything? The little girl doesn't answer. So she asks her, how old are you? She says, I'm six. She's like, oh, you're a brave girl to be up here by yourself, to be six years old. The little girl doesn't say anything else. They keep walking. They finally find an exit. It's locked. They find another one, it's locked too. Chrissy is like, this is crazy. So she, she's like, you know what, I gotta call someone to see how we can get off this floor. She looks down at her cell phone. She tries to call the doctor that she came from. She knows that she doesn't have a cell phone signal. That's when her palms start to get sweaty and her heart starts to race. She's like, oh my God, I cannot believe. She's like, we can't be stuck up here. That's when Chrissy hears this loud, low humming. And she's like, what is that noise? And the little girl, CJ, leans in close towards her. And that's when Chrissy says out loud, what's that sound, what's that noise? And the little girl whispered, it's the hive. She's like, the hive? She's like, yeah, we have to go. We have to move away from them. So they start to walk away from the noise and you know, the hive noise gets quieter and quieter. So this entire time, Chrissy keeps trying her cell phone, still no signal, child, no signal at all. So she's really panicking at this point because she's know we have to get off this floor. I don't know what that noise is, we have to go. Soon as they saw a what looked like a, a exit way, they hear the hive all of a sudden closer. That's when the little girl said, this way, I know where way we can hide. And so Chrissy lets the little girl lead the way. They go into this empty office and they sit down and they hide behind these bookshelves. But Chrissy can still see the doorway. She can see a big window and that, you know, you can see outside on the other side. And that's when Chrissy sees this large shadow. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God. And that's when the little girl says, it's safe here, it's safe here. The little girl just starts repeating over and over, it's safe here, it's safe here. And so Christy starts repeating it too, right? All of a sudden, she hears someone trying to open up the door. Christy closes her eyes. She's like, I cannot believe this is happening. She closes her eyes and she hears the sound of the hive coming into the room, right? She continues to keep her eyes closed and she's engulfed in darkness. When Chrissy wakes up, opens up her eyes, she noticed that she's struck down to her chair and she's a little confused. There's an older woman sitting in front of her with a clipboard and her legs are crossed. And so the older woman leans in closely to Chrissy and says, okay, who am I speaking to now? Chrissy's a little concerned and confused. She's like, it's Chrissy. She's like, okay, it's Chrissy. I was just speaking to CJ. I wanna see how things are. With how, how are you today, Chrissy? Chrissy is looking at this woman confused and she notices her name tag says Dr. Gray. She's like, she's looking around, she's like, she's like, you guys need to let me out of here. I gotta meet Jeff, Jeff is waiting on me. That's when Dr. Gray, Gray continues to lean in and say, Chrissy, we have been over this for weeks now. Jeff is not alive, he died in the car crash. I'm so sorry, sweetheart, but he is not alive. That's when Chrissy goes absolutely crazy. Let me out of here, let me out of here. No, I gotta go, I gotta go meet Jeff. Dr. Gray gets up, she pushes the button on the side of the wall to the intercom and says, we need help in here again. It still didn't work. That's when Chrissy sees two people, two men, excuse me, dressed in all white, and they have name badges that says the Hive Institute. The Hive Mensa Institute, child. Chrissy is screaming, screaming, screaming. One of the orderly has a needle, and he says, I'm so sorry for this, darling, and he pokes her and the arm with the medication, and that's when Chrissy goes to sleep. That's it, y'all. <laughs> that was a quick one. I know that was a quick one. I wanna do these within three parts. That one with Quentin and Mina kinda dragged out, y'all, but I wanna do these within one, excuse me, within three parts, uh, cause I like the little cliffhangers, yes. So, all right, you guys, let me know how you like the high. Yeah, and I'll have to think of another one soon, which I know I can. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, bye.